What is up, y'all? Summer here. Let's talk photography. So this is my third time attempting to record this video. <laughs> what is up, y'all? Summer here. Let's talk photography. So this video is a little different. I want you to stick with me, but today we're going to be talking about... So I'm hoping that this is the time that I get it right. What are we talking about today? I need y'all to stick with me because it's a little different, a little weird. You saw the title when you clicked on the video. You also saw the thumbnail. What are we talking about? We're talking about these guys. video it's five things my aquatic friends have taught me about photography many of you may already know this but since the start of quarantine my partner and I have decided to get into the aquarium hobby what started as one 16 gallon aquarium has turned into a 16 gallon a 50 gallon a 30 gallon a 55 gallon, a 40 gallon, two five gallons, one 10 gallon. So there is a lot of aquarium life happening in this house right now. Now all those tanks are not my responsibility. My responsibilities are this guy, which is a 30 gallon tank, um, a 15 gallon tank, and I have two five gallon tanks that I'm likely going to replace for one uh, like 16 gallon, but that's neither here nor there. The point of this video is to talk about the ways that this particular hobby has helped me grow mentally, emotionally, in all ways, but also specifically in relation to my photography. So this video is all about five things that my aquarium hobby has taught me about my photography. We'll start with um, five and move our way up to number one. So number five is hard things never stay that way. Now, it's silly how this came about, honestly. I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda silly. Um, I had a really tough day. And I came home and like I like to do at the end of any tough days, I come and I look into these tanks and I watch these little creatures living their lives. Um, and I take care of them. I feed them. I maybe do water changes, so on and so forth. That day I came home and I fed them. And I have a lot of snails and frogs. That's what my primary interest is. I have a couple of fish too, but I really like snails and frogs. Um, and I came home and I took out one of the things that I used to feed them, which are these things called algae wafers. They're pretty hard. When you try to snap them with your finger, it's not necessarily the easiest task. It's not monument monumentally difficult, but it's a hard tablet. So I dropped it in and I watched the snails eat. And when they first start, they can't really make much progress because the tablet is hard. But with time, the tablet breaks down. Uh, the snails are able to get their food, their nutrients, and I was sitting there watching them eat at the end of this really tough day, and I was reminded that hard things don't stay that way, and it was really refreshing because it kind of reminded me to stick in there and don't give up, and when it comes down to my photography, there's always some new task that I'm trying to learn. I'm infinitely curious and Right now, the new thing I'm trying to learn is large format photography, and it scares me. It really does. It feels very similar, yet totally different from things that I've done and learned how to do before. Simple task like being willing to load the film into the film holders freaks me out. One, because that film is hella expensive. It's like $5 a sheet. So if I destroy a sheet of that film just trying to put it into the holder, 
that's a bit annoying and more than annoying it's money and i'm not balling out of control like i'm not trying to waste money because i made a mistake loading the film into the holder and then that's not the only thing when it comes down to functioning the camera you have to remember all kinds of things you have to make sure that you close the shutter before you load in the film and that you and you take out the dark slide there's like the all of these opportunities to get it wrong and what i found is that it feels hard therefore it feels scary therefore i've been procrastinating and that day sitting there at the end of a hard day being reminded that hard things don't stay that way i remembered that with time and practice and patience with the process and with myself it would open all the doors i need to grow and develop as a photographer stepping into this new format of shooting so that's been really helpful and since that day i've been slowly dabbling more and more with my large format setup and just getting myself more familiar with what it means to learn this new skill number four so number four is just try it so i grew up with aquariums so to speak my mom had a 75 gallon aquarium which was quite a feat because we didn't have much at all technically we were pretty and I'm not even quite sure the full story or history behind my mom having this tank um, and then raising uh, she was raising Oscars if you're familiar with those fish in that specific tank but she loved it and and it was really nice like watching her have that joy spot within a life that was pretty hard otherwise so that's my background but i hadn't had a whole lot of hand in that process i was little i was uh, maybe seven or eight or something along those lines and when i decided to step into this hobby it was my first venture into trying to do this and it was nerve-wracking and i at first i was like okay i i'm really into plants so I was like, well, maybe I'll just have like plants. I'll just grow plants in this aquatic environment. Um, and then I really, I thought the snails were beautiful, mystery snails. I thought they were beautiful and interesting. So then I got a couple of snails and I was like, oh, these guys are really cool. Um, and then I got really intrigued by the African dwarf frogs um, and decided to get a few of those. You can't see it right now, but there's a pair of them over in that corner of the aquarium or maybe you can see it but i don't think the lens uh is wide enough uh they may swim into the view of the camera but they're currently mating so a little frog sex is happening behind me right now anyway so i i i did have my reservations and every step of the way i told myself just do it jump in and try it educate yourself make sure you know how to take care of these these creatures and do it and it's been a really interesting ride so far and these guys that are mating behind me led to eggs of course and i when i first encountered the eggs in the tank i was like i don't know about this but i was really curious about the science the evolutionary process that takes an egg to a tadpole to a frog and i told myself just do it so i harvested up the eggs i separated them from their parents because the parents it is in fact a dog eat dog a, a frog eat frog world out there uh, the parents would eat the eggs so i separated the eggs off and I set them up in their own little safe environment and I hatched them. What was the end result of that? These guys. from that experience with this feeling of not only just do it 
but <clears throat> but you can do it and that has really been helpful a really helpful mindset in my photography so I talked a second ago about my uh, hesitancy when it comes to uh, my large format process um, and I've definitely been stepping into that with a just do it mindset afraid to load the film into the film holder just do it you think that image could be good just snap it and it's been a really nice, really interesting uh, process for me. Uh, I'll go out and shoot. I'm not like a lot of these uh, YouTube photographers, or scratch that, <laughs> um, a lot of these photographers that are putting content out on YouTube that can seem to go out and be willing to shoot through an entire roll in one session. I'll go out and maybe be out for like an hour or more and walk away with maybe five shots, ten if I'm lucky. Um, I really take my time and I put a lot of effort and energy into deciding do I want to snap this image. Of course if I was shooting digital and when I am shooting digitally it is different. Um, I'm a lot more willing to press that shutter button um, but when it comes to film I'm, I take my time and I really I'm really, really, um, I guess the word that's in my head right now is judgmental about the images I'm willing to capture. But in some ways that's a great thing, in other ways it's not. It kind of holds me back because sometimes hesitating in those ways, I miss the shot I really wanted and I get the shot right adjacent to that when that person is a few steps further than I wanted them to be and so going into it with a little bit more just do it and a little bit less hesitation has been a really good mindset for me in terms of shooting off the cuff in the moment uh, it's been really helpful all right number three what does it look like ah uh, number three is be gentle so my very first batch of tadpoles, um, I harvested the eggs. I had so many, like maybe 50. I honestly haven't had a, uh, a cull of eggs that large since that very first set. So I, and there's a few different reasons why. There's a couple of fish in the tank now. There's other predators to eat the eggs. Um, and I think I also just had really great timing. Maybe the eggs were freshly laid, so I was able to uh, save them before uh, any of the predators were able to get to them. But my very first set of tadpoles, um, I pulled them out, I put them in a safe environment, um, and they all hatched and I had about, I kid you not, like maybe 50 tadpoles. And when it comes to frogs, African dwarf frogs, they're not very paternal, maternal at all. Um, and when it comes down to the survival rate, about 80% of them don't make it. Um, and so I, I was expecting for around that percentage to, uh, to happen with this set of tadpoles that I had hatched but I made a mistake I I wanted to move them to another tank and I did it too soon um, I'm not gonna get into technical aquarium talk because this is photography and a photography channel and uh, I'm sure you guys are not interested in that but long story short I moved them too soon and all of them died and I was so angry at myself I was like pissed off because I knew when I moved them there was an inkling that told me hey Summer you might be doing this too soon and I brushed it off and thought no it's okay they'll be fine it's cool move them they need a bigger environment it'll be fine so I didn't listen to myself which led to me extra being hard on myself when all of these little tadpoles died and yeah I was upset and pissed and it lasted for a couple of days and uh, I would tell other people the story in a way that was really not very kind to myself and eventually someone said to me hey you know I get that it was hard and that it sucked that those little guys didn't make it 
um, and that you could have made different choices. And also, you're a human and you make mistakes and you don't deserve to be treated the way you're treating yourself right now. And I sat with that. And the last part of their comment was, be gentle with yourself. Uh, be kind to yourself and give yourself room to make a mistake. And we had a really nice conversation around that. And I walked away feeling, one, a little bit lighter um, and a little bit kinder uh, to me, to myself. Um, and I realized that this wasn't isolated, this way of treating myself wasn't isolated to the death of the frogs. Uh, as humans, we're not just going to develop a new behavior. Uh, most of the things that we do, most of our behavior is most likely a part of patterns that are embedded in our psyche and embedded in our way of functioning. And I realized that I do that. I, When it comes down to my photography, if I make a mistake, it's not just, ah, oh, you made a mistake. If I misdevelop a roll of film, um, like I did in the last video, if I uh, miss the shot I really wanted, if I lose a roll of film, if I, if I make any kind of mistake that could happen, quite frankly, to anyone, I'm usually pretty hard on myself about that. So I've been trying to incorporate a little bit, incorporate a little bit more of that mindset. Be gentle with yourself. Be kind to yourself because you made a mistake that anyone else could have made. Uh, anyone from like someone with a lot of experience to someone who's new, um, it's okay to make mistakes. And it also reminded me that I am a strong believer that mistakes are critical to our development as humans. When we make mistakes, we learn, we grow, we we evolve. So that reminded me that being gentle is a part of that learning process. If you're not kind to yourself when you make a mistake, the chances are of you learning really important lessons that can help improve you as a person and as a photographer, as an artist, it decreases. So you have to be gentle so that you can be open to fully seeing what lessons those mistakes hold for you. Next up, number two. So number two is be patient. Now, <laughs> with my aquatic friends, one of the things that I have come or had to come to terms with is that nature needs to take its course. You cannot rush it and there is nothing you can do about that. When you buy an aquatic creature, say from aquarium sh from an aquarium shop, what you get is a juvenile that is pretty a pretty decent size. Like when I bought my little frogs and they were juveniles, they ranged from like being this big to this big. Um, some of them were even pretty close to being the full size that they were going to grow out to. And I had never, except for when I was a little kid, my, my mom told me a story the other day and she was like, you know, I'm not surprised that you're into frogs. She's like, I remember when you were four, you loved to run around in the ditches and, and find little tadpoles and find little frogs. <laughs> so I am like, I kind of disconnected myself from that child mindset and remembering that everything has... A development phase and nothing starts off huge and so with all of these tiny little snails that are like that big tiny little frogs that are that big I'm reminded that it is going to take a while for nature to run its course for this tiny little snail to become a big snail and the same thing for the frogs and it reminded me enjoy the ride enjoy the process love where they are now watch them grow and develop, nurture that development and be patient. This was big <laughs> because when it comes down to my photography, I can definitely be impatient. If I'm like in a place where I think, man, this composition, the environment is great and I'm going to wait for a person to be in this exact spot and I'm going to snap a photo. So I sit and I wait and I wait, and I wait, and then I get impatient and leave. And when I when I say I wait and I wait, I'm talking about maybe I wait five minutes, maybe I wait even less than five minutes, and I'm like, oh, it's never gonna happen, and I walk away. 
And had I sat there longer, had I let the process do its thing, let nature run its course, uh, hoping for a little bit serendipity, um, I may have been able to capture that image that I saw inside my mind. But impatience ran out, as well as FOMO, thinking like, oh, maybe there's something cool happening over there right now and I'm missing it because I'm sitting here. Um, I, I needed to change that behavior. So a practice that I've been doing is I'll sit in a location, I'll pick a spot, um, I'll find a scene that that's really cool to me that has like that in and of itself is a nice composition. And I will wait for folks to walk into that space for an entire disposable camera. Um, and I'll sit there and I'll snap and I snap and I'll snap and sometimes I'll do it with my Nikon F3 as well and I'll sit there for an entire roll of film and I'll shoot and this has really been helping me in terms of developing a better sense of patience. Um, it's also been helping me in terms of helping grow my composition skills as well as uh, growing my overall uh, photographic eye. Um, yeah, but that idea, like challenging my impatience uh, before sitting with my aquatic friends and understanding that everything has to run its course and really wrapping my mind around that in a way that finally stuck because there's nothing new there, right? That's information we all know. Uh, but once it finally hit me in a way that stuck, and I applied that to my photography, I've been really grateful for the changes that I'm seeing in relation to that, right? So we are down to number one. And this one has been a big one for me. But before I tell you number one, let's look at some aquatic friends, go. just so cute to me I mind you they're also very weird they kind of look like aliens uh, and they some folks may feel that they look a little creepy trust me my friends have definitely let me know how weird this hobby is everything from summer what are you doing or what is up with all those snails like what is going on here so I trust me I've heard <laughs> I've heard a lot in terms of understanding that this isn't really um like a mainstream hobby uh that especially that folks in my circle are necessarily uh drawn to doing um but i just i don't know i think they're great i really really do um and having them in my space especially in this time of being stuck at home for a year um all the police brutality um what it's just living life as a black person in the United States, um, the political climate, even dealing with racism at my job and trying to fight for um, better equity, stronger inclusion within my workplace for my students. It is, it's been a struggle. Uh, so having these guys has been, it, it's been pretty cool, honestly. All right, so we are to number one. What's number one? You got this. Now, this has been so critical for me. Um, having this mantra 
inside my head when I'm about to attempt something hard and or saying this mantra out loud, you got this, has been one of the most encouraging things that this aquarium hobby has reminded me of and has really uh, settled in deep inside of me. When I think that I like something's going wrong in one of my tanks again i won't get into technical talk but if something goes wrong in one of my tanks and i get really nervous about like oh no like are they are can i fix this fast enough do i know how to fix it i remind myself you got this and then i jump right in and work my way through correcting that problem Outside of my aquarium hobby, I'm also in the process of purchasing my first gun. Um, I grew up around guns, um, and I don't have one myself. And so I'm in the process of going through that process. And in California, there's a few steps that you have to take, which I think are uh, worthy steps, justified steps. So I'm going through those steps, and like it makes me a little nervous because a lot of the folks that... Um, a lot of the folks that I'm encountering to go through this process with, I know that we do not align po politically. I walk into the spaces full of people wearing NRA t-shirts and all of these other things with giant American flags, and I know that their hearts are probably Trump red, and I get it. Um, so reminding myself, like, you got this in, this in that space has been really helpful. I've been working really hard at work being vulnerable and exposing uh, racism on our campus, working with a team of folks to try to bring about systematic change. Um, and you got this has been so critical there. And when it comes down to my photography, I forget. I forget that I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in this. I forget that I've had so many gallery shows and that my work has been shown in so many places. I forget that I've sewn pieces to some pretty awesome collectors. Um, I forget all of those things. Um, and I have to remind myself that you got this. You're talented. You're strong. You're skilled, you have a great eye, you got this. So raising these aquatic friends has been a journey and it's definitely had its ups and downs. And my partner says sometimes, when is this hobby supposed to be fun? <laughs> um, and it's because there is a certain amount of stress that comes along with it, but it's that stress of caring about another living creature and wanting to do your very, very best to keep it alive. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like there isn't a problematic side to the aquarium trade. Um, the aquarium trade definitely plays its role in the, um, the depopulation of certain fish species within their habitats. In some cases, and in many cases, a lot of the fish that are um, not very prevalent in the wild um, anymore, they have uh, really low numbers, a lot of them are losing their habitat uh, through pollution, through habitat destruction, and a lot of other ways. And some of them only exist still within the aquarium trade. So I know that there are definitely some problematic sides to having this hobby. I have uh, my frogs, the fish that I do have, and my snails. And many of the animals that are in my tank right now uh, were bred and grown out or are in the process of being grown out by me. Um, I, I'm trying to do my best not to um, add to the stress that this aquarium hobby has on um, or can have on the environment and on um, species survival. So I just wanted to uh, be balanced and talk about that side of this issue as well. I really appreciate you for watching if you made it through the video. I know it wasn't exactly the shortest one and I know it's a little weird in terms of photography related 
topics, but I'm a person with many, many passions and I have a lot of hobbies. In my career life, I'm a teacher, I'm a designer, I'm a photographer, an artist. Uh, and in my hobbies, I am a amateur fish keeper. <laughs> I am a skater. I am a gardener, a avid gardener. Uh, learning aquaponic systems more and more every day. I'm a rock climber. Um, I run a nonprofit that I founded uh, to help with uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion within outdoor spaces for Black, Indigenous, and people of color. There's a lot of things on my plate that I do, and I do them because I love them all. Um, so I really appreciate the opportunity to share a point where my serious life, the things that I look at as bigger and more than a hobby, uh, my professional life things, where they intersect with my hobbies and my fun life things. So I really appreciate you if you made it through the video and you watched it this far. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me a great deal. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I'm working really hard to be more consistent with video drops. It's really difficult because of that long list of things that I just said that I do, um, but mainly uh, teaching is really taking a toll right now because um, we have been online uh, for two semesters now, and it's my students need a lot to make sure that they are staying on track, that they understand the content, and I've honestly been dedicating the majority of my time to taking care of them. And I try really hard to get the video content out there because I really enjoy making these videos and just like opening up this space and this uh possibility for pulling in more community within the realm of photography. Um, so yeah, I, I think that I'll be able to be a lot more consistent, like weekly posts for sure. Uh, once summer break starts in four weeks, and then I'm on vacation for 90 beautiful days. Um, but yeah, until then, I'll spend the next couple of weeks trying to be as consistent as I possibly can. All right, so that's all I got, y'all. Like, share, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I'm Summer Seeking Intel. Next time.